Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome CEO, Cloud Foundry Foundation, Sam Ramji. Good morning. It is fantastic to see you all here today. I hope you're having a fantastic conference. I've heard great things about yesterday. I lead the Cloud Foundry Foundation. For those of you who don't know what that is, it's an open source nonprofit that looks after all of the copyright, trademark, intellectual property, and development for Cloud Foundry. It was booted up by a tremendous gift of IP from Pivotal, who continues to contribute a lot of engineering. All of the trademarks are a right to call it Cloud Foundry, the copyright, the speed that the code moves, the concepts. But today, we have contributors from all over the world, many countries, 64 members of the foundation. Let me talk to you a little bit about why I care about this so much. So borrowing a line from Robert Piercig's brilliant Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance, I'm going to talk to you about Zen and the Art of Platform. So many of you probably recognize this symbol. You associate it with Zen. And, and, and so it talks to emptiness. But to me, it also talks about inclusion. The question is, what can we absorb? What can we bring together? That's important because open source is a positive sum game. Those of you who know game theory, this is not news. But those of you who haven't brushed up on that recently, there are really two classical forms of games. There are non-zero-sum games and zero-sum games. Sadly, uh, since I'm from Oakland, I just saw a zero-sum game go the wrong way. In order for the Oakland Warriors to lose, the, the Cleveland Cavaliers had to win. Now, that's a bummer for me. They'll play again. You can kind of recycle a zero-sum game. But it's interesting, but not transformative. Positive sum games are unbelievably powerful. We all have experience of a positive sum game love. The more that we offer, the more that's available, the more that can come back to us. Open source works exactly like that. Robert Wright asked a few years ago in his book, Non-Zero, what is the logic of human destiny? It's a pretty bold question, right? What could he possibly mean by that? As you look through the structure of civilization over time, he came back with one answer. He said, the history of civilization is a history of positive sum games played at larger and larger scales. The scale of the game is, how many people can I call self instead of other? It's human nature to want to draw a bright line between self and other. It divides us between people we trust and people we don't trust. We often say other is bad, self is good. So we've learned how to build economies, polities, and organizations that allow us to understand who can we trust and interact with. We all start with self equals family as our first positive sum game. Blood is thicker than water. You have a structure of parents and children. It's what we call a simple polity. A polity is a word you can apply to say, where is that bright line around self and other, and how can we expand it? So over time, we went from self equals a tribe to self as a chiefdom to self as a city state, maybe a nation state. You can meet somebody else on a plane who you've never seen before, have no blood relations with, but just the fact that you carry the same passport, you may feel, oh, this is self. I can take care of this person. I can trust them. Maybe we're going towards a world state. We don't know. But these are the polities. These are the structures that we understand about how to share and how to create great economies. Now, some time ago, a few centuries ago, we started shifting and said, what if a self equals a company? Most of you here have an experience of self equals company especially if you work for a large one, a multinational, for example. You can meet somebody that you've never heard of, but they have the same badge that you do. So you know, I can trust this person. I can share secrets about my company. I can write code with them. I can build new things. But that boundary is starting to break because it turns out the company boundary is not the most interesting or powerful thing in the world anymore. There's a limit to how many people you can pay, how many resources you can amass, how much you can hoard. Instead, the new power is how much can you give away? Something crazy happened about 20 years ago with the establishment of Linux and the Linux community. Suddenly, even if you worked for completely different companies that competed with each other, for example, HP and Red Hat and IBM, you could say, I'm a Linux kernel developer. I don't care about the company affiliation. What I really care about is I'm working on this incredible open source project, and I'm working to change the world. This absolutely blew companies' minds. But now we're starting to figure out open source, our ability to collaborate at scale with people that we've never met before is changing the world. This is about bringing everything into the circle and finding what can we include. Now, inclusion is crucial. And you'll hear and you've heard and you practice bringing developers and operators together. But it's more than that. 
A good platform and a good positive sum game will also bring in users and the business. Without users, there's no value for what the developers build. Without the operators, it won't stay up. And without the business, we can't sustain our effort. So Cloud Foundry is targeted at those four key constituencies. We build processes, we build code, and we give it away for free to everyone. In bringing everything together, it's crucial that Cloud Foundry is able to be part of a broad open source universe, part of Spring, aligned with Linux, bringing all of these different systems that we use every day to build our businesses and transform them into one common whole. Now, it's interesting that platforms themselves have a particular structure which builds on top of everything that we work on today. Platforms themselves are positive sum games. Unlike product-based businesses, a platform is something that leads by service. It sits at the bottom of a massive inverted pyramid of value, where products, services, solutions, and users all stand up on top of a platform. The more that they can serve, the more effort the platform can put out to support everyone. So we say the more people we can support, the greater the platform. This is interesting also because many of us have the experience of Uber, Airbnb, modern platform businesses. Platforms drive network effects. That's why they have these runaway capabilities. So combining a positive sum game with a platform that brings many people together is the cause of the breakout success of what we're seeing today. Jeffrey Parker, Marshall Van Elston, and Sangeet Chowdhury at the MIT Institute on the Digital Economy have published a book recently. This is just in February, for those of you who are interested in understanding some of the economic richness of platform systems. It's called Platform Re Revolution. They looked at all of these business models that we're starting to see break out. They asked the question, why does a company that owns no cars have a higher valuation than Honda? It's an interesting question. What they came back with is they, they said, the more people that we include, the greater the network effects. There's a joke that says the greatest salesperson in history was whoever sold the first telephone. No network effects. But as soon as you get to the second, the third, the fourth, the fifth, the hundredth, the value becomes very obvious. Right? So these kinds of network effect-driven systems are tremendously powerful. So as we bring developers, users, and operators together, we also have to bring them into the future. So many of you are here as development professionals, as experts, as operators, figuring out how to build net new code every day. But it's also true that the only thing better than a line of code that you wrote is a line of code you didn't have to write. So a great platform, a certified platform, something that's common that you can rely on for decades, is also one that brings in packaged services and, builds and enables you to have packaged applications on top of it. So Cloud Foundry's goal is to be in every data center in the world, every cloud, providing a common layer for you to be able to build and move your applications and services around. It's about creating freedom for you. And we have made tremendous pre uh, progress in this over the last one year. So in just one year, we've seen this project has gotten over 2,300 patches, over 2,100 contributors, over 130 core committers. And this is a really important thing to understand. These are the women and men who sweat every single day, all day, building code. And they come from many, many different companies. This puts us in a league with Linux. This puts us in a league with OpenStack. These are the elite projects of, uh, of the industry today. The most important thing in Cloud Foundry is our velocity. The biggest risk as you expand the project is that you can slow it down. But we've seen a release almost every two weeks for the last year. It's pretty extraordinary. I mentioned being able to move your technology anywhere you want. We've gotten contributions from Amazon, from Google, from Azure, from VMware, from uh, the OpenStack community at large, from IBM, from EMC, to be able to run Cloud Foundry on any of these clouds. That's absolutely crucial for you to be able to have your freedom. We've expanded to 63 member companies, 173 user groups, almost 33,500 individual members, 105 cities, 48 countries. My big takeaway here is we're well on our way to our mission of getting Cloud Foundry in every data center in every country in the world. I think looking back on the last year, what brings us all together and what's really fundamentally the cause of our success is that we share a vision that unites us. We see a world of cloud computing that is ubiquitous and flexible, that supports multi-cloud application environments. We see one that is portable and interoperable, that enables users to move their applications wherever they need to go, and one that's vibrant and growing. We need to get paid to write software. We want to have a massive ecosystem of applications and services that last forever, right? that will power your enterprise, that will power you for decades. And finally, we have a human community that is full of heart, it's something that makes me excited to come to work every single day. It's pragmatic and focused on exchanging practical experience. Prototypes beat theories. 
It's diverse and inclusive of people across race, gender, orientation, and lifestyle. A diverse world de deserves diverse solutions built by diverse people. And finally, it's respectful. It's committed to listening to thought thoughtful and honest perspectives. What I've learned is that there's often the greatest wisdom to be gained by listening to the quietest person in the room. So with that, thank you. Join us, build on the Cloud, Cloud Foundry platform, and help us with our mission. Thank you very much.